Hey guys, uh, so here's a follow-up video to the recent tutorial video I made regarding uh, making ice eye mesh pieces for your STL um, helmets or props uh, or, or uh, masks. And I was thinking about it and I just realized that maybe there's an even better way that we could approach making these eye meshes. Um, and so I've made this little tutorial video just to, to show the, the process of how I made um, an alternative kind of process to making this eye mesh. So what we have here is uh, the, my vision um, helmet that I've created uh, a few years back. And what we're going to do now is just create an eye mesh for this. So what you see here is the inside of the vision mask where the eye socket is. And what I'm doing now is just drawing out a mask. So masking out the area where I want to create this uh, eye eye mesh piece. So just the area around the eye socket at the moment. And so just using the mask brush and just masking that area out. And also at this point, you want to use the, the mask brush with back face mask masking turned on. Uh, that way when you brush on a mask, it won't affect the, um, the polys on the other side. So this other side of the camera. Um, at the moment I'm using the mask lasso, uh, which, uh, you can't actually, um, cull out the, the, the back face mask. So as you can see, as I rotate around this model, you can see that what I've masked is also masked out on the other side as well, which is not exactly what we want. Um, but I'll show you in a sec how to kind of, um, kind of remedy that problem. And so as you can see, I've created a poly group of out of the mask, but what you, what you can see now is that it created uh, the poly group of uh, the outside of the mask as well, which is what I don't want. So what we want to do now is basically we only want this part of the mask, this part of um, the the mesh that we see right now facing the camera. We don't want any of the polys on the other side. So what we do to kind of remedy this is we go to our Z plugin and we go to our poly group it, click poly group it button, and then it brings up this pop-up window. And from here, uh, what you need to do is just basically select a plane that you want. So in this case, we want to select the plane that, that we want, which is the one that is facing the camera, uh, which is this one right now. And then it will create this kind of uh, this kind of preview of a poly group. And then with the slider, you just slide it up and it will kind of grow that mask um, according to the, the facing normal of of the plane of the the plane that you clicked on so see that how you've got this kind of dot that dot is basically where you clicked and then as you slide up the slider it'll grow um it'll grow that uh that grouping so you just want to slide that slider to a point where you want to just group what you what you actually want as a polygroup so at the moment now we we've, we've polygrouped only the the polys that we see uh, facing the camera and not anything behind so as you can see now, everything that's behind the camera is gone, um, which is what we want. And at the moment, I'm just uh, smoothing out the edges. So basically I clicked mask by features and this basically just masked out the border area. And then I inverted that mask and uh, I, um, I increased the, the polish by feature slider just to kind of, um, just to kind of smooth out those edges. And now from here, I want to actually create that that eye mesh piece now. So we've created the area around the eye, the eye mesh, um, which is where we'll uh, apply glue to, but now we want to actually create the eye mesh piece, um, the, the basically where the pupil is. And so to do that, we just click close hole and that will close up that hole. We'll see and now that we have that purple, purple poly group in the middle, that's basically looked at the mesh and found holes in it. And it's just filled that hole, filled those holes in um, with the, this new poly, purple poly group. And now from here, I just run a Z remesh to basically make it low poly. Uh, we don't want to make it too low poly. We still want to keep uh, the basic contours of that eye socket piece because again, we want it to kind of sit and fall perfectly um, to the eye socket of the existing mask. Um, and so basically what I'm doing now, what I've done now is I've, uh, I've split that eye, the pupil part of the eye mesh in its own sub uh, sub tool and uh, the eye socket area is its own sub tool as well. And with this eye socket area, I've gone ahead and uh, I've given it some, some thickness, 
with basi basically just a uh, using the Z remesher brush and with extrude activated and just extruded um, that eye socket area just to give it some thickness. And basically, that's pretty. That the eye socket piece is basically done now. And so now I'm focusing on the pupil eye mesh, the actual eye mesh part. And it's basically the same idea as the previous tutorial. Basically, uh, I've uh, unwrapped it using Z remesh. Uh, Z, sorry, I've unwrapped it using UV master. And then now I have to apply a texture to it using the noise maker. So go into surface, your surface tab, and clicking on noise maker. It brings up this little pop-up window. And from this little pop-up window, we click on the alpha to bring in an alpha texture that we want. In this case, I've used a honeycomb pattern. I size up that honeycomb pattern to a size that I think re represents kind of like a mesh. Um, and then from here, we go to, uh, we want to uh, subdivide. So we have more geometry in our, uh, our mesh here. And so we want something maybe in the millions because when we actually apply this texture as a mask, as you'll see now, um, it'll be nice and crisp because you've got a lot of geometry in there. So what you do is just go to surface tab again and click mask by noise. And so that created a mask from that texture, that noise texture that you've um, that you imported. And now going into the masking tab, um, we just want to shrink that mask a little bit because those holes were a bit small. So we just want to shrink the mask a bit. And then um, it's just a matter of basically clicking the shrink mask a couple times and then sharpen and then just repeating that process. Um, if you want, if if you want uh, smaller, uh, larger holes, it's just it's just basically a, a a matter of just repeating that process. So clicking shrink mask a couple times and then um, sharpen the mask. And now from there, you that's basic. We've basically created a poly group from our mask and then delete and hidden. So we basically um, isolated what we wanted and deleted hidden. So all the all the parts that are basically in between those holes, we got rid of. And then from here. You just want to run a, uh, a Z remesher and you want to make sure that your target poly count is quite high. So in this particular case, I've run it at 30 and that's kind of, uh, it's kind of made a low poly version of this mesh, but it's also retained that, um, or the, it's basically retained the, the, the shape of those holes. So it went from something like a few a million uh, polys down to sixty seven thousand, which is good. And as, as you can see, it still retained the the nice um, circle shapes of those holes of the mesh. And from here, uh, I just uh, using the uh, move brush, just uh, mold it a little bit, um, making sure that you know things are kind of intersecting nicely. Uh, it's not if this part is not uh, too important because we'll be giving um, the mesh some thickness, but um, for me, I just like to finesse this part a little bit. And once you're happy with that, it's, it's basically just the same process to give it some thickness. So using the, the Z modeler brush, uh, you just go in and activate uh, your extrude and you want to extrude uh, all polys and um, yeah, just click and hold and drag and then um, it'll create some thickness. Now, as you can see, when I did that, uh, they left a few um, sharp parts. Um, which is not all we want. See how there's some um, little jaggy parts sticking out. And so we just want to run a polish on that just to get rid of those sharp parts. And from here, we just merge uh, merge down. So we merge the eye mesh with the eye socket area. And as you can see, it fits perfectly in that eye socket area and it's flush with the existing mask. And from here, all we need to do is just run a mirror and weld making sure that you're on the proper subtool, run a mirror and weld and it'll weld to the other side. So you've got a perfectly symmetrical left and right side um, eye mesh. And to finish up, all you need to do is run a decimation because you want to crunch, crunch the poly count down a little bit. At the moment, it's at 3.3 million and you want to get it down to something in the hundreds of thousands. So maybe hundred or 200,000. And from there, it's just a matter of just um, exporting an STL. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, I hope you guys have learned something from this or took something from this. Um, I tried to keep it as brief as I possibly could, uh, but yeah, as I said, I'm quite naturally uh, very long-winded. Um, so hopefully that next time I'm, I make these videos, I can make them a bit shorter and a bit more concise and um, a bit more uh, beginner friendly. So please click that like and subscribe button and also please go check out my Patreon and see what I have to offer. 
All right. Thanks, guys.